ULA's Atlas V just died. Engine failure. Amazon satellites stuck on Earth indefinitely. But SpaceX? They're about to break every record in space history. Ship 36 test fired yesterday for six seconds. Booster 16 ready to roll. Launch window? June 30th. That's 34 days from their last flight, crushing their own 37-day record. Here's the shocking part. While ULA can't launch one rocket, SpaceX is hitting their sixth mission this year. How is this even possible? What's SpaceX doing that nobody else can figure out? This disaster reveals everything about the space race right now. Let's dive right in. June 16th, 6 a.m. Ship 36 rolls out in complete silence. The world has no idea what's about to happen. By afternoon, the tanks are filling, but something's different. Only one-third liquid oxygen, a tiny amount of methane. Why so little fuel? What are they really testing? Then it happens. Ignition. Six seconds of pure power, 230 tons of thrust screaming into the Texas sky. But here's what nobody understands. This wasn't just another engine test. This was the relight capability, the same system that failed on Flight 6, the same system that mysteriously vanished from the last three flights, the system that determines whether you land safely or become expensive space debris. SpaceX just proved they cracked the code. But wait, there's something else happening during those six seconds that changes everything. While that engine is roaring, the flaps are moving. Forward flaps, aft flaps, both actuating during the firing sequence. This isn't normal. This isn't standard procedure. So why risk it? Because SpaceX isn't testing systems anymore. They're testing integration. They're proving that when you're screaming through the Martian atmosphere at hypersonic speeds, your flaps will work while your engines are firing. One mistake, you're a crater on an alien world. The timeline gets even crazier. Booster 16 completed its static fire just seven days after Flight 9. Seven days. Most aerospace companies need seven days just to schedule a meeting. But here's the number that'll stop you cold. June 30th, launch date. That's 34 days from Flight 9. Their current record, 37 days between Flight 5 and 6. Do the math. They're about to shatter their own world record by three full days. That's not just improvement, that's revolution. But the real shock? Last year, SpaceX launched four Starship missions total. This year, Flight 10 will be number six, and we're only halfway through 2025. If they maintain this pace, 12 flights by December, one launch per month. With the world's most powerful rocket, no company in history has ever achieved this, ever. Meanwhile, 2,000 miles away, disaster is unfolding. Same day, June 16th, while SpaceX is making history, ULA discovers their nightmare. Elevated purge temperature. Those three words just killed Amazon's satellite dreams. Translation? The cooling system failed. The nitrogen gas keeping the engine components from overheating stopped working. An overheated rocket engine before ignition is a bomb waiting to explode. But here's the part that makes it worse. The RD-180 engine powering Atlas V, it's Russian-made, over 20 years old. With current geopolitical tensions, spare parts are nearly impossible to get. This isn't just a technical failure. This is the death rattle of old aerospace. And Jeff Bezos, he's watching his billion-dollar satellite constellation die on the launch pad. Project Kuiper needs 83 successful launches. 83 to deploy 3,200 satellites and compete with Starlink. Missions completed so far? One. Just one. Every day, Atlas V sits broken on the ground. Starlink extends its massive lead. Starlink has over 5,000 satellites already beaming internet to Earth. Kuiper has 30. 30 satellites. That's not a constellation. That's barely a proof of concept. The irony is brutal. Amazon revolutionized fast delivery on Earth, but they can't deliver their own satellites to space. Bezos refused to use SpaceX for obvious reasons, and that decision just cost him the entire satellite internet market. But why is SpaceX succeeding? where everyone else fails. That single engine test on Ship 36 wasn't random. It was surgical precision. Fire one Raptor engine to test the relight sequence without risking all six. The flap movement during thrust, 
That's testing aerodynamic control under extreme conditions. If you're landing on Mars, your flaps must work perfectly while engines are screaming at full power. No room for error, no second chances. Meanwhile, Booster 16 just received its hot staging ring. This hardware lets the upper stage ignite while still attached to the booster. Picture this, jumping from one car to another while both are traveling at 17,000 miles per hour. That's what hot staging does, every single flight. But the real breakthrough isn't the hardware, it's the process. Both Flight 10 stages completed cryogenic testing before Flight 9 even launched. The static fires happened in parallel, not sequence. Hardware checks, installations, final preparations, everything simultaneous. This isn't project management. This is industrial scale rocket production, like an assembly line, but for spacecraft capable of reaching Mars. Traditional aerospace builds one rocket at a time. SpaceX builds them like Tesla builds cars. Mass production, rapid iteration, continuous improvement. The old way takes years. The SpaceX way takes weeks. And the regulators are finally catching on. After Flight 9, debris reached Mexico. The FAA could have shut down the entire program. Investigators could have grounded SpaceX for months. Instead, they limited investigation to just the ship stage. They waived additional booster inquiries. Why? Because the data showed Booster 16 performed flawlessly. This signals something massive. After years of delays and investigations, the regulatory environment is shifting in SpaceX's favor. The FAA is starting to trust their engineering. That trust is worth billions. But there's a hidden strategy here that most people completely miss. SpaceX isn't just launching faster. They're building something unprecedented, a sustainable space operation. Look at their targets. 25 flights per year from Starbase, 44 launches at Kennedy's Complex 39A, 76 flights at Complex 37. Those aren't goals, those are requirements. To make life multiplanetary, you need that launch cadence. While ULA has 13 Atlas V missions left before retirement, SpaceX is planning over 140 flights annually from multiple sites with reusable hardware. The economics are staggering. Every rapid turnaround cuts costs. Lower costs mean competitive prices. Competitive prices mean more customers. More customers mean more flights. It's a virtuous cycle traditional aerospace cannot match. So here we are, SpaceX turning 37 days into 34. ULA's Atlas V sitting broken with a 20-year-old Russian engine. Amazon's satellite dreams crumbling while Starlink dominates the skies. But this isn't really about rockets or satellites. This is about two completely different philosophies move fast and break things, dot, 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 versus move slow and break everything. The numbers don't lie. SpaceX is hitting six flights this year. ULA can't even launch one without catastrophic failure. Traditional aerospace is dying, dot, 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 and we're watching it happen in real time. What happens when Flight 10 actually launches? Will they push the record even further? Can they really hit 12 flights this year? And here's the bigger question nobody's asking, dot, dot, dot. If SpaceX can turn around Starship in 34 days, dot, 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 what's stopping them from hitting 30 days or 20? The space industry just changed forever. The only question is, dot, dot, are you ready for what comes next? Drop your launch date predictions below. I'm calling June 28th. What's your bet? SpaceX just lost a massive $5.6 billion contract opportunity to Rocket Lab. While Starship keeps exploding on the pad, Neutron is quietly stealing SpaceX's biggest customers. The numbers are brutal. Neutron launches cost $50 million, Falcon 9, $70 million. That $20 million difference is killing SpaceX's competitive edge. But here's what's really scary for Elon. The Pentagon doesn't trust SpaceX anymore. They want alternatives. And Rocket Lab is delivering exactly what military contracts demand, reliability over spectacle. How did a small New Zealand company outplay the king of space? Let's dive right in. The Pentagon meeting that changed everything three months ago. 
Pentagon officials sat in a classified briefing room. The atmosphere was tense. The topic? SpaceX dependency. The conclusion? Absolutely terrifying. America's entire space infrastructure relied on one company, one man, one vision. That single meeting changed the trajectory of the entire space industry. Here's what they discovered. SpaceX wasn't just a contractor anymore. They had become a single point of failure for national security. And in military doctrine, single points of failure must be eliminated. Enter Rocket Lab, but this isn't your typical underdog story. This is something far more calculated, far more dangerous for SpaceX than anyone realizes. The precision strike nobody saw coming. While the world obsessed over Starship's 400-foot spectacle, Rocket Lab was quietly building something deadlier, a precision weapon disguised as a medium-lift rocket. Neutron specifications tell the real story. 13 tons to low-Earth orbit, nine Archimedes engines powering the first stage, carbon composite body construction. But here's the killer feature, partial reusability with sea-based recovery. Why does this matter so much? Think of it this way. Starship is like a massive freight train, incredibly powerful, but it needs perfect tracks, specialized stations, and everything has to align perfectly. Neutron, it's a high-performance sports car, smaller, faster, and it can take any road you throw at it. The financial numbers are brutal. $50 million per Neutron launch versus Falcon 9's $70 million price tag. That's not just cost savings, that's market disruption at its absolute finest. But there's something even more shocking about these numbers that changes everything. The secret weapon SpaceX never expected. Here's where the story takes a fascinating turn. While SpaceX chases Mars colonization dreams, Rocket Lab studied what customers actually purchase. The answer wasn't payload capacity. It wasn't flashy headlines or social media buzz. It was reliability and speed. Military contracts don't care about colonizing Mars. They care about getting satellites deployed fast, on schedule, every single time. This is where Neutron's design becomes absolutely genius. The Archimedes engine operates at lower pressure than SpaceX's Raptor engine. Sounds less impressive, right? Dead wrong. Lower pressure means fewer catastrophic failures, less maintenance downtime, faster turnaround times between launches. It's the classic tortoise versus hare strategy. And we all know how that story ends. Remember SpaceX's early days? They won by being scrappy, focused, practical. Now they've become the establishment, the incumbents. With everything to lose, Rocket Lab just became the new scrappy challenger. The $5.6 billion wake-up call, December 2024, arrived with devastating news for SpaceX. The Pentagon announced Phase 3 of National Security Space Launch Contracts. Total contract value, $5.6 billion. SpaceX leadership assumed they'd dominate, just like they always had. Then came the plot twist that nobody anticipated. The contract requirements heavily favored rapid deployment capabilities, multiple launch provider options, and proven operational reliability over raw lifting power. Everything Neutron was specifically designed to deliver. The military had learned brutal lessons from the conflict in Ukraine. Space assets get targeted first in modern warfare. You need backup systems, distributed capabilities, multiple launch options ready to deploy instantly. SpaceX's monopolistic approach suddenly looked like a critical vulnerability, not a competitive strength. Defense contractors started whispering uncomfortable questions. What happens if SpaceX has a bad financial quarter? What if Elon gets distracted by his other companies? What if political winds shift against them? Those whispers became official policy. Diversification became military doctrine. The engineering battle that changes everything. Let's examine the technical war happening right now between these two companies. Starship uses stainless steel construction. It's cheap to manufacture. Incredibly strong, but extremely heavy. Neutron uses carbon composite materials, expensive to produce, but incredibly lightweight and efficient. This creates a fascinating paradox in business strategy. SpaceX chose the budget construction option that requires massive launch volume to generate profits. 
Rocket Lab chose the premium construction option that generates profit on each individual launch. Translation, SpaceX needs to launch constantly, desperately, to make their economics work. Rocket Lab makes substantial money on every single flight. One business model depends entirely on volume, the other thrives on value. The recovery systems reveal an even bigger strategic difference. Starship's chopstick tower catch system is pure engineering theater. Visually impressive, absolutely spectacular. Practical for military rapid deployment scenarios, not even close.